<laughs> All right, well, thank you both. And thank you for holding this hearing. Uh, I appreciate that we're having this hearing. I appreciate your leadership on ensuring quality care for seniors in assisted living facilities. This issue is not a new one for me. In July 2020, my office released the findings from the first national survey of COVID-19 in assisted living facilities, revealing that about 7,000 residents had died from COVID in just the first half of 2020. In many ways, the threat of COVID in assisted living facilities was just as serious as it was in nursing homes, but these facilities received little help and little attention. Now, before that, in 2018, I released the first ever national assessment of quality care issues in assisted living facilities, which was completed by the Government Accountability Office at my request. That report revealed that over 20,000 serious health and safety problems occurring at assisted living facilities in just 22 states from physical assaults to medication errors to unexplained deaths. In the years since my office did that work, new studies have revealed additional problems in assisted living facilities. Mr. Mullet, you lead the Long-Term Care Community Coalition, which is dedicated to improving the quality and accountability of senior living facilities. Can you say a word about what kinds of threats seniors at assisted living facilities face and how serious the risk is? Thank you. Uh, I think there are two major risks and both of them are serious. Uh, first, due to the increasing needs and vulnerability of people who go to assisted living, the risk of harm has gone way up. Uh, people are vulnerable, people are depending upon assisted living for significant dementia care, et cetera, and we just don't know if they're getting it, and we often don't know when terrible things happen, as you noted from that GO report, which was so important. Uh, secondly, due to the increased sophistication of operators, we have private equity, we have real estate investment trusts that are circling around in this industry, the risk of financial exploitation has gone up tremendously in recent years. You know, and your key word, we just don't know. Um, these are serious problems that have been going on for years but we hear so much less about what's going on in assisted living facilities than we do in other facilities like nursing homes. So Mr. Mollett, why do you think assisted living facilities receive so much less attention than say nursing homes? It's a really interesting question, if I may. I think that you know, in the 70s and the 80s, we had some tremendous scandals in the nursing home world and that led Congress to pay attention and finally to take action. And I think that's where we are with assisted living now, is that we're hearing more and more of these stories. The, the GAO reports from 1999 and the, and the more recent report that you mentioned, Washington Post and Times reports that uh, Senator Casey mentioned, local news reporting from around the country, over and over we're seeing that these issues are coming up and now is really the time to take action. So with nursing homes, we put in federal standards on this, got more federal oversight, but assisted living facilities are governed by a patchwork of state laws without any meaningful federal oversight. And that means no national standards that assisted living facilities are expected to meet. That is particularly worrisome because private equity firms and real estate investment firms, REITs, have gone on a buying spree of senior and assisted living facilities. We know how their model works. Uh, private equity comes in, strips the assets, cuts the staff, and sends the quality of care down the tubes. So Mr. Mollett, your organization has looked carefully at the data, and you've heard from the residents of these facilities. When private equity comes into an assisted living facility and slashes jobs, what impact does that have on the residents? Well, workers are the most important component of care in any setting, especially in nursing homes and assisted living. So that could be devastating for residents. But we know, I mean, unfortunately, as we don't have a lot of data directly on assisted living, we have some on senior care in general, and of course on nursing homes and other care settings. We know that when private equity comes in to a sector, they often pillage it. Yeah, in other words, 
more people will suffer when private equity comes in. We need to do more here. At a minimum, the Biden administration should require additional reporting on problems at living assisted living facilities. In fact, that is a priority recommendation from the 2018 GAO report. While CMS is making progress on implementing this recommendation, they should finalize it quickly. This has gone on long enough without oversight. And Congress must look at ways to improve accountability, transparency, and quality of care in assisted living facilities. So again, I want to say to the chair and to the ranking member, thank you for holding this hearing. And to the ranking member, thank you for uh, graciously letting me do this. I'm trying to cover two hearings simultaneously. And um, I appreciate your letting me ask these questions. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Senator Warren. And Senator Braun is again ceding to a colleague, Senator Fetterman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, a credit to Sen my Senator Warren. That's the outstanding uh, questioning as well, too. Uh, anyway, th thank you.